Hello to the captain. This is Career Build Series, episode number 37. And so I've been trying to figure out what I want to do this episode. Kind of give it a little thought the last couple days. And so we had some money issues. Because we launched this rig, it put us in a tough money situation. And so let's kind of look at the map, and I think that will help to uh, illustrate this. So we had 70000 now, that is with no vehicles spawned. And so the issue was this, was we only had 70 grand, and this base is key to us being able to do things. This is $80,000 FJ Warner Docks, which is a bargain. It has a seaport, it has a train terminal, and it has an airport hangar. It allows us to pretty much make and launch vehicles for all regimes here, uh, air, sea, and ground. And so... The thought initially was this, was to, you know, I, I just did this, I think it was episode 35, was I took the tug and the barge and I went over and I'd have to fill up with commodity and then I'd have to sell the commodity to make enough money. It would probably take me a couple runs to be able to get this base. And then I would be able to launch a truck, move the truck over here, and then fill up the, the barge. And so I'd have... Many, many hours of me barging stuff. And so what I thought would be better is this. So if you look at my money, I'm up to 170000 So I gave myself a $100,000 loan. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself an interest rate. Now, I haven't decided yet because I don't know what's going to be ridiculous and what's going to be real, you know, realistic. And so I'll figure out the interest rate later. But, you know, we already have a successful company here. We have a tugboat and a barge. We have an oil platform which tells the bank that you know we have plenty of collateral that we can um <laughs> and we can afford it and so now what we'll do is i have a loan i'll figure out the interest rate i'm going to make the interest rate pretty punishing that way it incentivizes me to pay off this loan as soon as possible so let's go ahead and buy this property and as you can see we're not far ahead of where we were we're only about 20 grand up but what we can do is we can start working some oil. So if I launch a truck and a trailer, I need to go get this oil out of the rig. And then I'll bring it over here, and I need to launch the barge, and I need to launch the tugboat. And so I need to keep in mind all this stuff, because this is going to be a, still we're pretty low on money. Still there's going to be a logistic um, problem for me to solve. And so if we're looking here, we can sell oil for 448. Now, the thing is this, is we don't have to buy it. And because we don't have to buy it, because we're actually sucking it up out of the ground, that's going to save us a lot. So we can go up to a total of 114,000 liters in the barge that we were using. So if I put in 114,000 liters... And so we're going to be able to sell it there for 4.8. That's 4, you know, 4. Point, about, you know, 4 440,000. You know, it would be 448, 300,000, essentially. And so that's going to be big cash. That gets us into really good territory. Now, I don't like having an unlimited amount of money. You know, I like to kind of have some restrictions, and part of that is my my short-term, medium, and long-term goals. Is some of my long-term goals that sounds like a ton of money, having 400 grand, but it's important to me to get that new home ship working and going. I want to buy this island. That island's 100 grand right there. So some of these things are really going to bring it into focus. Where you know, I want to be able to buy this base. That's 100 grand. So that's a quarter of that gone. I have to pay back a hundred thousand dollar loan. There's two hundred, so there's two hundred left. You know, so we're actually not that's not too too much money, and that's not a ton of money. So that's actually pretty good where we are. So first thing I want to do is let's go ahead and let's move over here. I'm just gonna be doing some teleporting. You know, I, I'm a huge advocate for having that creative menu on, and the reason is this is you know it, it reduces, like, you know, if I had to actually run from the docks to there, you know, that might not be the best gameplay for me. I might not enjoy it as much. And so by having that creative menu on, I can choose. Do I want to run over there or do I want to actually just teleport? And so you can kind of make up the choice yourself. So I started making a new tractor, as you can see here. Um, I'm not going to finish this right now. 
what I really want to do is this. At some point, I want to rip off all of the top of the Mac Pinnacle. I want to get all of these microcontrollers down in the frame. And what I want to do is build a ready-made chassis. And I'll put that on the workshop. I'm certainly not going to promise it's going to be anytime soon. I struggle to get things finished. But we'll ha what I'll have is a, a chassis. The chassis will be the frame, the fifth wheel, the wheels. It will have the motor and the transmission on it. And so what that will allow me to do and other people, if they want to download it, is to just build a cab and be ready to go. I might even include a bunch of the cab components. And so as you can see, I started building a new one. I'm like, that's going to take a big time investment. And so what I think we're going to use is some of my already built stuff. So I started, uh, I worked on this road train anchor. I'm not going to do it as a road train right now. It's just not working. I have to work on the dollies and everything else. But as you see, it add an extra axle on here. And so this is our big fluid tanker. This holds a lot. This holds 14,000 gallons. And so it's 3.28, I think, liters per gallon. So let me do a quick math. Somewhere around 45, but 14 thousand times 3.28 45 9 something like that so that's a lot of liters let me double check and make sure get my calculations right so uh nope, it would be uh multiply 378 so it'd be even more than that so it's um you now we're talking over so in the neighborhood of 46 47 thousand liters in one trailer load so that's pretty good that's going to be about three trailer loads. And so one thing we are missing, though, is I'm going to need... Oh, I do have pumps. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Somebody was thinking ahead. <laughs> Who would that be? And so uh, I do have pumps because I didn't put pumps on the tanks on the rig. And part of that was to keep the cost down. And I can put them on this trailer. So this trailer hopefully should be ready to go. I'm just going to double check it. I had some issues with connections. And I just want to double check them. So we should go in from the light cord to these panels here. And the big one is going to be the brakes. I want to make sure all my brakes are operating right. So like right here is park brakes should go on for there. These are my service brakes. Service brakes are there. Our clearance. Okay, so hopefully this is ready. Let's go ahead and save this. As a anchor. All right. And so we'll actually bring up the main part of it, which is going to be we're going to use the Mac R tractor. Uh, it has an extra drop axle on it. So I kind of like this as my heavy hauler. And then we'll go ahead and we'll bring in that tanker trailer. All right. And so I'm going to do a quick test, make sure this is up and running and everything works on this. And we're going to, I just want to make sure, I, do, I doubt I put any filters in here, but, you know, we have to worry about that. I saw some commentary this morning about people wondering, you know, still wondering why they got rid of filters. Um, Beginner was actually on the official Discord talking about it, and the main reason they did it was... The whole point of fractioning is having a new cool method that's realistic to be for actually separating constituent elements of uh, crude oil. And if you had a magic filter that just magically filters everything, it would ruin that. And so that's why they did it. Did they do it perfectly? Did they do it right, in my opinion, the way they changed the filter? No. I think a lot of people threw filters. You know, a lot of people are annoyed because they threw filters into their builds and uh for for different reasons and now a lot of those aren't working and that of course can be frustrating so oh uh, the why does this only have two axles okay um all right and bye this is interesting i just saved a tanker oh uh, it's train Okay, it's this one here. I I just loaded the wrong one. Okay. I loaded the wrong one in. But um, you know, that was the reason they did it, and of course they could have done it better. But um you know that that is why they did it, is they added a new mechanic and so of course they had to change it because of that. Whether it's certainly not done perfectly, but 
you know, some people were just wondering why they would even do it, and that was the reason why is they added a new fractioning element into the game, you know, and I understand people annoyed that it breaks part of your builds, but it's kind of, you know, that's kind of, you know, innovation. You kind of have to do that sometimes, and it sucks, but it's, you know, and you can use depreciated parts. From You know, uh, remember that if if it's on your build, you still have that. I can go back. Anything I have with the, the old filter is still there, and so you can use depreciated parts, and people have already put the old depreciated one on the workshop as well, so. Not perfect. Their their execution was certainly not perfect, but uh, now I think the fractioning was a, was a good way to do it. I think filtering was not necessarily the best. All right, let's see. So I just want to double check. I need to make sure my brakes are coming off here. Brake falls. Brake. All right. Hopefully we're all set up here, and we're good to go. I like to get a uh, road train going. I did make, I made a couple of videos I ended up scratching. They, one of them was trying to, uh, talking about road trains and how I really wanted to get that going. I'm just going to quickly look, and I think it's just this road out of town. So, draw axle is going to be up because we don't need it. This has my Eaton Fuller 10 speed in it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put the Jake brake on. So uh, a little reminder for people what the Jake brake is. It's a the Jacobson company came out with it. That's why it's called Jake brake. And it is an engine brake. And so what it does is it essentially it opens valves and it turns the diesel into a compressor, essentially. So instead of instead of injecting fuel and compressing it, it it um, doesn't do that and so what happens is you compress uh my, i'm not uh nope i don't know where i'm going here let me look okay i'm going the right way uh so what it does that you know when you have your you have your into intake stroke on the diesel and so you're intaking air and then what you do is you get your compression stroke and so the piston comes back up to compress the air now normally in a diesel it injects fuel in there and so the bottom of the um the open volume of the cylinder will have air the top volume is uh diesel mixed with a little bit of air and so in diesels they're actually um they're uh homogeneous mixtures where you don't have equal mixing between the fuel and the air here and so once you get to a certain compression the uh diesel will will ignite expand you know you get expansion which is where your power stroke is and then the piston comes up again the exhaust valves open and now you exhaust that um exhaust out into the atmosphere and so what the jake brake does is it changes the valving where you know, the, the intake comes down on the intake, the piston comes down on the intake stroke and it brings in air. And then it goes back up on the compression stroke, but you don't get any diesel injection. So it just compresses it. Well, now the compression is causing the, it's causing a braking force, right? Because you're using the energy of the, the momentum of the vehicle moving, the wheels turning, to be able to compress that air and then on the exhaust stroke it's letting you know so it goes back down again then it letting that exhausted air out now, i think it actually at the top of i actually think it's at the top of the compression stroke it exhausts but it exhausts that air and so you hear a blah 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 blah, blah noise so i have that simulator i just took my finger off the w key while it's slowly breaking me and so what you do is you flip on your jake brake switch and um when the switch is flipped on, if you take your foot off the accelerator, it will it will uh, turn the the engine into a compressor. Now, generally, you have multiple clicks, and so you have like low, high, medium. Some have like four or five settings. I don't think five. I think five is excessive. I think usually three or four is the most. And so what happens then is it will it will do more cylinders. So more cylinders will be used braking. And so it's a good way, like if, you, if you're if you running around on hills all the time, that's a way to save your brakes. Because especially if you're on mountainous hills, 
like really serious hills, you have to be careful of a of a break fade where your brakes will actually eat up and not work as well. And so you definitely don't want a tractor trailer come screaming down a mountain and hitting something. All right, so here we go. Let's go pump in. All right, and let's go up there. We're, uh, as, as soon as they get too far away from this, it will stop pumping. Generally, it kind of puts these things in a quiet, to, you know, mode. And so we're just going to go ahead and hook this up. Make sure this is filling. Uh, you're going to misbehave here. Pump in. Let's double check this. See what's up with this. This should be... I'm trying to see where... This is here. Um, screw. Okay, I just, it's, I labeled them wrong. That's fine. There we go. I just labeled them backwards. So that was just labeled backwards. I need to fix that. Put that on my to-do list. So uh, let's look at the interior design of this tanker. I don't know if I ever should get this, but. Uh, so these are called baffles. You put in these walls, and let me see if I can find a picture of tanker baffles. All right, so here's a picture of some tanker baffles. And so when you're driving a, a tanker full of, in this case, it's going to be oil, oil, these, whatever you're hauling, you could be water tanker, you know, it could be a syrup tanker, it could be anything. The issue is this. So when it's full, it's just a lump of weight. So let's say you hold um, 10,000 gallons, which is often in the U.S. what their capacity is because you want to be limited to 80,000 pounds. And if you're hauling water, water is about 8 pounds per gallon. So there's 80,000 right there. And so when you're full, it's just a lump of weight. It's like if you had a lump of steel in there. The issue is this. When the volume drops, that water wants, or that liquid wants to slosh forward. And the issue is this. If you had, let's say you're down to 60,000 pounds, right? So when you go to break and you have an 80,000 pound lump in there and it's, it's all the way to the top and it can't slosh, when you break... All your brakes are effectively working. They actually work a little bit better because you now have weight pushing down on the brakes. That gives you good braking force. Now, this is the issue. You drop 20,000 pounds. Now you're down to 60. Well, guess what? When you stop, all that water is going to slosh forward and hit the front of the tank. And so force equals mass times acceleration. So you have a huge mass. You have 60,000 pounds. So it's like another tractor trailer hit you in the rear and rear-ended you. And so now all that water is pushing you forward. You know, a little story was when I was when I was younger and I was working at, um, you know, it was a facilities maintenance job. We had a, it was a small, small dump truck. It was just like a regular pickup truck size dump truck. And it would haul a water trailer. And when the water was full, it was fine. But as soon as you dropped a little bit of the level, if you... If you slammed on the brakes, the water would hit the front of the tank and it would push you through the stop sign. So you had to stop like 10 feet back from the stop sign in case it sloshed that it wouldn't push you out into the intersection. And so what these baffles do, as you can see here, they have holes in them. And so this is this is the same way that a, a shock works, say, in a motorcycle is. Uh, what it's It has oil and it has air in there. And so, you know, uh, liquids are non-compressible, so you couldn't fill that shock completely 100% with oil or else you would hit a bump and it would just bend the shock. And so part of it's air, that's for, that compresses, so that's like having a spring in there. You also have a spring in there. And then what you'll do is you'll have these baffles, these discs with holes in them. And so what happens is as the water comes and it hits these plates, it can go through the it can go through the hole, but only at a certain rate. So the water will slosh forward, but it will slosh forward much more slowly. And so that causes it so you, it can't get enough momentum to push the vehicle. So that's what baffles are. So I simulated some baffles in there. All right, so I have a couple uh, baffles in here. So it's essentially just segmented tanks. And then I have these fluid ports in here. You can see it's filling 6.1 liters per second. Uh, these just are essentially a pipe with... Uh, fluid port here and so that will naturally just drain in there so you see this is coming in here we have a fluid port here and we have one here and so these will naturally uh, even out 
as they go through. And so we have all these baffles, and so this will naturally just fill all the way through. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to set that up. As you can see, our pumping rate here, we're pumping in there, pumping into our tanker here. So it'll take us a little bit, but um, I want to fill this tanker up. So kind of the plan for this episode is this, is we're going to fill this up. We're down to 60 grand. That's fine. Uh, we took out the truck. We took out the trailer. Those can all go back on the workbench when we're done with them. That will give us our money back. So what we can do is this is going to hold uh, 14,000 liters. That's, no, it's not going to hold 1,000 liters. It's going to hold about... 45. Let me get an exact number. So it's uh, it's not going to be precisely exact, but 14,000 liters or 14,000 gallons times 3.78, uh, 52.9. So almost 53,000 liters. So we hold 114. So about two. I'm gonna. I'll probably just do two trips. Let's do two trips, and we'll do two trips from here to there and what I'll do is I can launch the barge and I can tie it off to the dock and the reason that barge is very expensive it's like 30 grand for that particular barge is it actually has things on it like generators it has the helipad on there it has anchors on there so we can actually anchor that so what I'll do is I'll drive down here we'll offload onto the barge and so I'll do two trips with this tanker um, I'm trying to, at some point, build a road train that we can fill it in one. And so, go down there, do two trips, put the truck and the trailer away, and then that should give us back enough money that I can then launch the tugboat, which I have to be concerned about. So what I'll have to do is, hmm, I'm trying to see. I can't recall that. Interesting. So I'm trying to think what I can do. So I have to launch the tugboat as well. I could do a save. Uh, I'm trying to think. Trying to think. I can't launch both. That's too much money. I'll, I'll see if I have a barge pre-built that's cheap. I might. I have a. I have a barge that just li just holds liquid. Um, I'll have to see about that. That should be ultra cheap. So I might be able to launch that barge instead. And. Uh, now that way I can launch that barge and the tug at the same time because I need them both sitting out here because I can't relaunch the tugboat and I don't have any other place to launch it except from here and so I'd have to motor all the way down. But anyway, so the plan is do a couple trips, fill that barge up. That barge can then go up here and our money problems are going away. And so I'm thinking about like 6% per day maybe on interest. So trying to think what that will be so but i i took out a hundred thousand dollars here yeah so we're talking six thousand a day sounds reasonable so if this takes me you know in game days and so that's a reasonable amount to spend on a loan so i kind of like having a loaning system in game where i have to where i can you know, a banking system where i can loan myself some money here, fuel level. Okay, so should be a liquid level. But um, so here we go. We have oil going in there. It's going to take quite a while, which is fine. I'm just going to go AFK, do some stuff around the house, and uh, check right back in with you guys when this is full, and we'll take it back and we will load it on. All right. So I think we're at the point of diminishing returns here. We're getting a really slow pump rate. I was AFK for most of it, so it didn't really matter to me. But as you can see, pumping pretty slowly, and I would say that's because most likely, I think. The air pressure in the tank, as you can see, we have a full oil tank. I'm getting low down here, but we'll grab this hose anchor. And so the air pressure in there is kind of acting as an air damper. Um, I, you know, pressurization isn't really fully in the game, but I don't have an air vent, so the air can't go anywhere. And a big slowdown here. Hopefully, slowdown kind of resolves itself here. Let's get moving. Big slowdown. I don't know what gear I'm in either. I'm probably in a high gear. Big slowdown. Play this speed back up. All right, so we're gonna we got a lot of we have a lot of weight on us. So let's drop the drop axle there. As you can see, drop axle is going down. There we go. All right, so this is a considerable amount of liquid. Now, we can do this a couple ways, and I think I'm gonna do it the 
easier way. And so when they added uh, Industrial Frontier, you can now store things in the bench. And so these three benches here, here, and here are all connected. Or it's actually here. But they're all connected. As you can see, we have... Oh, I can't put oil in there. That is interesting. I thought they would have updated this to make it so you could put oil in there, but they did not. I think that was a missed opportunity. It would have been nice to be able to put some oil in there because I was going to warehouse this because, you know, my issue was that I was going to have to take out the tanker without the oil. Now, the other thing is I... I think I, I can't remember if I worked on it in one of the videos or not, but I've been working on, if you remember, I made that example tanker for the build challenge Charlie, and so, I'm just checking my, we're doing 33 miles an hour, so I can't really go faster than this because the mass is too heavy, which is fine, and so, I built the little oil tanker, so my issues are this. is So one of the main reasons I built that little oil tanker, one of the re big reasons I had the Build Challenge Charlie is if you can get the cost of the vehicle down, it, uh, it helps so that you can start doing this trading a little bit earlier and it will gives you more opportunity to make more money if you want to. So for example, like, you know, I'm in need of money now and so I'm going after what's more profitable and so I can actually launch that small oil tanker, which is what I'll probably end up doing. To launch the barge and the tugboat is going to be expensive. Now the problem, no, actually I probably won't. Stay. I'm trying to think, the issue with that small tanker is the capacity is very low. I made a very small tanker. It's 7,000 liters. This thing holds like 50-something thousand liters. I probably have on board now, so that's going to take a lot of trips. So I'll probably fill the barge. I'm trying to decide money-wise how I'm going to do this. What I might do is give myself another loan just to get this done. You know, at the end of the day, the whole point of the game is to have fun. And so if some of these things seem tedious to you, if some of these things are annoying, like, you know, the fact that you're going to have to go do a bunch of oil trading to be able to then go to more oil trading. And for me, that sounded like a couple days of oil trading exclusively didn't sound all that fun. Like I've been kind of itching to make a new helicopter. I've been itching to do some of these other things. And so... You know, at the end of the day, play the game how you want. Play what's going to be fun for you. And so for, for me right now, it's going to be more fun for me to be able to actually go and do this one oil trip, get a little bit of cash. And so that's why I gave myself that loan. So I might give myself a new loan. That might be a better way to do it. So what I'll probably do is I think we'll end this video a little bit early here. We'll bring this over to the bench. I think it was a missed opportunity by the devs. Should have made it so you could store oil inside of the benches. If I'm incorrect and somehow you can, I don't see it. But the ability, you know, see, I could, if I convert it to diesel or jet fuel, I could store it in the benches. I didn't fraction this off into G diesel and jet fuel, so I can't. Currently, we're having a really kind of scary slowdown here for me. What are we looking at here, physics wise? We're getting us 18 frames of logic. Um, you know, that's just, that's, uh, that's on the low end. Been having some issues with, with this. Let me get too much, um, you know, fit, fr uh, physics slowdown here. It's just like, you know, we're going 33, but we're in slowdown, so it's seems a lot slower than it is. I, it's, so I got a little bit of a tire slip. Let's see if I can get. Okay, we're sped up to 44 now. 45, 46. I'm gonna let this tack wind out. About 1400. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, upshift again. I get my speed up. It's tough with the slowdown. One thing you'll notice is you notice how the shifter is oscillating. That's because on the Mac Pinnacle, the floor of the driver's compartment is actually one up, one higher than it is on this on the Mac R. And so that actually the pivot rubs. So I might try to find a way to fix that at some point. We're up to 57 miles an hour. So actually we're doing a good speed here. We should be in 10th gear at this point. Um, you know, I set this, the Eaton Fuller is set up so that it is realistic to real life. And so 10th gear is a set of speeds essentially that you're going to be at. It's all, it's, you know, the engine is turning at a certain RPM. 
the gear ratios are converting that and then your wheel has a certain diameter your wheel is actually your last gear and so that's how you know what speed range you're going to be in so now that's all gone over in the gearing tutorial i still see a lot of people who are mystified by gearing and so uh, if you're having issues with gearing uh, go ahead and um you know, watch that tutorial and it, it uh, explains in depth, you know, um, some people were putting in comments of how to do it quickly. Sometimes that's great um, to have a quick solution, you know, especially when you're building, it's nice if somebody can be like, just do this, just do that. But often it's important to know the why of the thing. You know, it's kind of that expression, you know, give a man a fish, he eats for the day, teach a man a fish, he'll, you know, he'll be able to eat the rest of his life. And so it's that same sort of thing as, if somebody tells you, oh, just do this in your microcontroller, if you don't understand why you're doing that thing, you know, that will feed you for the day, but then in future projects, you're not going to be able to sustain it yourself. And so that's why I kind of go with the approach of teach people how to do these things so that then you can, you know, um, go in there and do it yourself. And the other thing is, you know, a lot of my tutorials, you'll see, you know, I, I go more in depth. And part of the reason is, if you know why, if you know the why of the thing, if you know why something, for example, if you know why an engine will will die when you try to give it power, you know, I see many posts every day of like, you know, my engine's running fine until I, you know, until I give it clutch and then it dies. Why? Well, people aren't understanding that the engine needs enough power to maintain compression, to maintain running, and they've simulated that by having a minimum RPS value, which is essentially what you need in real life. You need a certain compression. Well, that compression happens at a minimum revolution because, you know, every revolution you're getting a certain amount of pressure. And so, you know, you go below that, well, you can't maintain compression, your engine stalls. And so if you understand that concept, well, then you understand, okay, well, my engine is overstressed. It has too much load. I can do a couple things. One, get a more powerful engine. I can down gear it where the engine is, where I'm increasing torque and the engine is actually feeling less of the load. So essentially when you down gear, one of the things you're doing is you're putting less load on the engine. And so by putting less load on the engine, you're less likely to stall. And so these are all concepts that if you understand some of these concepts, um, you can you can be self-sustaining and then you can move on to the next concept. So. It's all dependent upon what you want to get out of the game, what you want to learn. You know, if, if you just want to build something cool and use it, which is perfectly cool and okay, you know, a quick answer is often suffices. You know, you, you get an answer, it fixes your problem, now it, you know, your vehicle works. But if you learn why it does this, if you learn in the future how to make these dynamic decisions yourself, well, the next time you build a truck, if you put in the same engine, the truck weighs three times as much, or you're hauling three times as much, guess what? It's going to stall again. Oh, I forgot this has two... Perfect. I forgot this has two spawns for boats. I forgot all about that. That's perfect. So we can spawn the um, barge on one side and the tug on the other. 4,000 hours in game, and I still... Like, a lot of this is forgetting. I knew this was here. You know, I've done it for career, or for uh, creation review. Put stuff on both sides, but it... Um, even I forget after all this time of uh, what we have on our base. But I think it was a missed opportunity by the devs to not have the ability to store oil. Because I'm still, see, the problem is I'm in slowdown, but the vehicle is still going 50, so. All right, let's get it up there. Hopefully with a savory load, it will get rid of that. I often think the game almost acts as though it has a memory leak, and that's kind of what's going on with this. We get massive slowdowns like this. So let's go ahead and park it right about here. Yeah. Brakes are set. Let's. I'm going to leave the engine on. That just gives me power. This. Hopefully. Yeah. Check my tanks. Um, I think it's just the slowdowns. Yeah, I have plenty of fuel. Like, this thing sips fuel. Like, this barely uses any fuel, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, let's launch it on this one. I just want to make sure I don't accident. Let me first save. I always recommend the save if you're going to have, like, I could very easily ruin my whole gameplay here. If I didn't save and I went and I clicked on this bench, which I'll click on it, and this vehicle disappeared into the bench, I would lose all that oil. So I'd lose, at this point, I've been AFK most of it, but hours of 
work. It would take me hours to recoup that. So if I go in here and you see it didn't bring the vehicle in, awesome. But if it did, that would be like frustrating for the keyboard against the wall type of thing. So by making sure you have a save, you're protecting yourself from that sort of thing. So here is that new barge. The benefit of this one here is oh, it's not painted. This is oh, that's still 38 grand. That's still actually pretty. Uh, this barge here is the one I'm going to be using. So this one here is 34. And so because this has those two workbenches, I can actually put the truck back in. So let's see, we're at, um, let's spawn that to start with. Okay, so this barge is going in. Now you see how high it sits? That is realistic. The barge is, barges generally don't have fluid ballast. And because they don't have a fluid ballast, they, uh, because they don't have a fluid ballast, you don't have to, you know, they sit up very high in the water, and, and they're very square, so they have tons and tons of buoyancy. You don't really have to worry about it like you do with, say, an oil tanker, which is thin and roly-poly, and you have to worry about it rolling over. All right, so for this barge, I have to put in a value so that it will auto-stop. I don't think it even works right, but uh, if I put in a high number... Okay, there we go. It's going now. So that all that does is open up the valves to allow it to be filled. So we're going to fill this up now. This is going to take some time. Again, good AFK time for me. Uh, you know, some people say it as though it is 100% always true that, you know, if you have to leave the game, that's not good gameplay. Yes and no. I've talked about this before, how I actually like games sometimes that you have to leave like for example escape from tarkov you cannot leave it's like you have to go to the bathroom you wait the whole 50 minute raid or you try to get out to go to the bathroom because you know you don't want to lose everything the whole raids benefit you know because you went to the bathroom uh, you know for example i had to go run some errands so i was like oh you know what i'll do i'll start doing my oil trading because i can go run my errands and you know do and have this just pump while i'm out running errands you know I've even played games where I've played multiple games at once, had multiple games running because I can, uh, you know, I can go ahead and, you know, do stuff AFK. And so, for example, this is going to take a while. Uh, it's actually going to take probably quicker. I don't know. The nice benefit was, I'm, I'm not sure how long it's going to take the MP because the oil platform, the oil tank is higher than the truck. So we had the, we had gravity working in our favor. To help get the oil into the tanker truck now the tanker truck is higher than the barge so we should have gravity helping us get the oil from the tanker down into the into the barge and so we're going to fill this barge up and then what i'll probably do is i'll probably i don't know if i'll time lapse it or do it off screen we'll see but um, once this is done, I'm hopefully going to be able to, I can't, I can, so what I'll do is once all this liquid is in here, I'm going to do a quick save here. All right. And so once the barge is full, I'll probably reload the save. And that way, hopefully I get rid of this lag. I'm, my thought is that the game is compounding factors and essentially acting like a memory leak. And that's one of the reasons we get slow down. Like this game has been up and running for a couple hours now probably and so it's compounding all those issues so if i if i reload a new uh, save it will probably help and so the plan is offload this oil onto the barge get the tugboat drag this barge over to here um, we have the oil gantry sell it here it's up to five dollars and 73 cents so that it was at four something when i did the math at the beginning of the video and so that's good money. That's a really good money. Now, the thing that I'm not sure of yet is it wouldn't make any sense to convert oil into diesel and jet fuel if the, uh, these are buys anyways. It wouldn't make sense to convert those if they're not one-to-one, -one, if the price weren't better. But if we look over here, so that's five, seven, this is eight, two. As you can see, we make more money on jet fuel. We have a jet fuel gantry up here. Theoretically, this should be worth... Or, yeah, so here's $9.81. So what I think we're going to do is this. Especially seeing them in slowdown now, I don't want to wait and uh, and do two tankers worth. So what I think I'm going to do is offload the oil in here. 
And then I will take the tugboat and barge up here. Sell that. That will give me a little bit of money. That will hopefully... Let me see where we're at here. So I think we're at... I think we have, like, say, 50,000 liters on board. Yep. So 50,000 liters of oil is on board here. And I'm selling that for $5.73, theoretically, so 5.73. That's $286,000 I have sitting on my barge once that's full. That's more than enough money. So I, instead of running another truck and taking all that time, I'm not in the mood for that. I, I really want to kind of build some helicopters. I want to do some other stuff. I want to get back in some rescues. Uh, you know, like this one's awesome. There's a fishing trawl that has emergency. That's 19 grand. That's good money right there. Um, that's uh, extinguish all fires and rescue eight casualties. That would be a really cool mission. I'm not going to do it probably because it's going to expire in 40 minutes anyway. But... You know, I like to kind of keep the gameplay open. I don't want to do too much, you know, barge work right now. The other thing we can do is this. is So we have a full oil tank here at the oil platform. And so one thing I was thinking of doing is converting that into diesel and jet fuel. And then later at another time, I can truck that and park it in this bench. So you see how the bench holds diesel and jet fuel. I wish the devs had added oil. I'm going to put that in as a feature request. Make it so that I can store oil there because what I would, what I could be able to do is this. I could recall the truck into here where I took the truck out. It would, these all share the same, uh, these all share the same resource pool. And so it would take all that oil and put it in. So if I bring a tanker full of diesel, theoretically, I should be able to put that in the workbench and it will fill all the, you know, 56,000 to 50,000 liters of diesel and put it in the bench. And so if I did that, put all that in the bench, well, then it would make it so that I have it all sitting in a bench. So say, for example, I want to, all I want to do is I'm going to truck some diesel over, stick it in here, and then I want to go do some missions. I can do that. And that stays sitting here. And whenever the price is right to go sell diesel, which diesel actually sells here, so say the price is right to sell diesel, I could go drag it over. Now, this is what I'm curious about. Currently, jet fuel is certainly uh, important to make. Certainly worthwhile making jet fuel. Uh, it sells for considerably more than oil. But diesel does not. As you can see, diesel is a dollar seventeen. So the my my issue is this. I don't know if I don't know if it's a one to one transfer. So for every one gallon of oil, am I making a gallon of diesel? Or a liter for every one liter of of oil i'm making a liter of diesel if it is there's no point for me to make diesel except to uh have fuel for my vehicles and so what i would like to do is i would like to make as much fuel for my vehicles as possible you know in a pinch I'm, i'll buy some but i would like to do that so currently if that's the case if it's one to one it's not worthwhile for me to really ever convert to diesel so i'm hoping it's not one-to-one -one. we will see hopefully with surge pricing that's helping we're already down only about a thousand liters so i'm gonna afk i'm gonna let this run i think we'll end the episode there i think this was uh kind of a good foray into getting going here a lot of this is me trying to remember stuff like you know i forgot there were two workbenches here but it's nice we have fd warner now if we look at the uh time's not really shown but Essentially, I'm going to pay a minimum of $6,000 for that loan anyways. I might make it more. And so I'll probably make it more. I'll do, let, let's do a 15% loan. So we'll say we, we did 100000 so that's fifteen grand. So I'll pay fifteen grand back. So when I get this, when I get this all sold, what I'll do is I will essentially delete out $115,000 of money and that's me paying back the loan. So I think it would be nice if there was an in innate loan system with the game, but that's something I've added on my own is, hey, you know what? Again, the point of the game is to have fun, and for me, it was not going to be fun. You know, initially I was thinking, launch tugboat and barge here, go up here, do multiple fuel runs. So up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, just to get enough money to buy this, to then go move a truck back and forth, to then go move oil. It was like, no, man, you know, by then I'll be sick of moving oil. I'll want to do something else. And so this allowed me to give myself a loan, make myself pay for 15 grand for the loan, which is a considerable amount of money.
15% interest rate. And then I can buy this base and do what I want to do and then move on and do something else that's fun. And so I think that's a good strategy. So I hope you guys enjoy the episode. I hope you guys are enjoying oil. Um, if you have any tutorial ideas, go ahead and put it in the Discord. I'm always looking for what people are struggling with and what we can help you out with. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy that, and I'll see you in the next one.